Hi friends, uh, today we are going to see an uh, important thing like how we are submitting a job in Spark uh, cluster. So many of you might have learned Spark from the Institute or through online learning. Today we are going to see how people are working with Spark, how they are submitting the jobs in, in Spark cluster. So let's get into the video. Let me share my screen. Okay, so first let me tell you how the things are working in between behind the scenes in the production. So when you are working for a project, what happens is there will be a big cluster in the out there. Like it can be in premises or it can be in AWS or it can be in Azure or uh, like anywhere it may be. So there multiple like nodes will be available. So cluster means it consists of multiple nodes, like can be 40 node or 50 node or 100 or 1000, 2000, whatever it may be. The bigger the client, the bigger the data, the bigger the nodes are. Okay. So there multiple nodes will be there. It creates one big cluster and you will be given one system. Like you will be working from a Doge machine, but from there you will be able to access the cluster and you will be running the jobs on the cluster. That's what uh, normally we will be doing. So what happens is I mimic the cluster in my, in my, uh, like in my laptop. I ran, I'm running Cloudera VM, which is old one actually. Now Cloudera stopped providing this. I'm running this Cloudera VM in my local to mimic the uh, server part. Okay, so server part. So from my system, what I'm going to do is I'm creating one putty. Okay, I use putty. I'm just closing and opening just for you to understand. So I'm connecting to the Cloudera from here. <laughs> And I'm just giving the password. So similarly, you will be working in the production also. So you will be doing this. And so now I'm able to access that cl cluster. Now the cluster is running, single node cluster is running in my own machine, but this can be running in remote as well in the project scenario. Okay, so Putty will be used to mimic that uh, terminal session. You can create multiple sessions. You just right click and, sorry, right click and create a duplicate session and you can create multiple session. You can run it from here. And if you wanted to, like push some uh, push some jars or something from here to here let's say you are uh, using eclipse and creating some kind of a jar you are creating a uh, like uh, the product deliverables which you want to push to your development server and then just wanted to try it out or you want to push some uh, files in the cluster so what you do for that uh, like normally we will be having the access to do the scb win scb i'm using in my local using this i will be pushing the files from my local uh, local to the cluster. Cluster is nothing but this one. Okay, I'm running this in the virtual machine. I'm just mimicking the cloud Hadoop cluster. Okay, that's a, a, two things we are using. We are using the uh, like putty and then we are using WinSCP to transfer the files. These are two things we'll be using. So using this, we'll be submitting the jobs and we'll be running the jobs and we'll transferring the files. Everything will be done. And the back end, it can be anywhere, like it can be cloud or it can be in premises or it can be anything. Okay. That's what you need to know all the time. And next is how we are submitting the jobs. So for example, to tell you how we are submitting the jobs in production, we will be using Spark Summit to submit the jobs. There are multiple, uh, like uh, there are multiple, what is that? Uh, memories and uh, how much executors we need to give everything we need to give in Spark Summit itself. So what are the parameters we need to be, we need to give in production? That's what I'm going to tell you in some time. So before that, we'll be creating a, some kind of project, small project just to mimic you how to give the pro, like all the things in the project. I'm just uh, giving you one small uh, program, sample program. This is nothing but a Scala program, just counts number of uh, words. Okay, just counts number of words and let's create, create the output. That's all it does. So what this, we just need an input file and an output folder. It will create the uh, path accordingly. So just, I'm going to create the jar first. Okay, just I'm going to run this. Okay, just save it. And then it will create the, it is creating a jar. Okay, meanwhile, let it create the jar. It will be creating here. Let me refresh. Okay, it's going to create here. <coughs> Okay, meanwhile, let it create. Meanwhile, I'll tell you what uh, what we'll be doing. So in Spark Summit, we'll be having multiple things. We need to specify how much uh, executor we are using, num. So executor is nothing but, let's say you have uh, 100 GB uh, worth of data, banking project you're working, and there are 100 GB of data you want to process. And you think, okay, I'm going to use 100 execu 10 executors and each uh, going to use 10 GB of RAM. Each executor is going to use 10 GB of RAM and each is going to have four cores. Each executor will have four cores. Like that, I'm going to have 
or 10 executors like that you are planning for your resources for your project particular project okay that is fine like this is the total number of uh, size available like 100 nodes are there 100 nodes are there and each node having 64 gb of ram is there that's a total cluster capacity and this is what you are deciding okay this is what I, I need so how do you specify this in your spark summit command so the uh, 10 executors how you will be specifying is number of executors 10 you will be specifying and after that how much ram like this will be coming as executor memory executor memory that will be 10g okay like that you will be specifying executor memory and then executor core you will specify it as 4 so like this you will be specifying in the spark summit command itself so this is how you will specify and then you will specify the jar and run the command okay jar and run the command this is how usually you specify the configuration in spark summit itself let's see if our like okay it's created okay yeah the jar is created let me just uh, refresh okay refresh is not there target okay the jar is created it's a uber jar it has all the uh, what is that all the dependencies i'm just pushing the jar to the desktop in my vm okay it's pushed and i can see the jar somewhere yeah it's here okay let's just run the job from uh, our local itself i already ran it i'm just going to show you okay master yarn deploy okay so without anything if we, we don't have to give anything just we can run it okay uh, let me just delete that as well just to show you how these things are working okay <clears throat> just all the minimum required thing to run the job spark job is spark summit and then give the class name what is the class name you wanted to run you want to start the project that's what you have to give after that you can give the uh, jar okay the uber jar what jar you are going to run and then the jars input that too is a custom one it may be differing okay this is the input and this is the output that's what i'm giving output should be the output should be new one okay it should create okay the uber does not exist okay okay i have to go to desktop because i copied in desktop Okay, now let's run it. G Boomba. Okay, it's running. Okay, it's become and currently I'm using 1.6, but the latest version of Spark currently is 2.4. Okay, if you are going to use, just use 2.4. Just update or something. Okay, now it's uh, running. Okay, running, 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 running. Okay, it's done. <clears throat> okay, the output path is output six. Okay, how do? Hadoop fs ls slash user slash cloudera output six slash. Let's see if it is created output. Okay, it created output and it's success. Very good. Cat slash user cloudera output six slash part start. Let's see what's in there. It's just a word count. It's just going to count how much words there based on the spaces. Okay, it just uh, counted something. I use some in my some of my input uh, file. It counted this and give me the output. Okay, our main aim is not the program, but how we are running the program. That's why I'm just skipping that part, showing how what's the output and all. Now we just we didn't give anything. Okay, we didn't give whether it should run on ma, yarn, or local or nothing. But in the program, as you see, I mentioned it's a local. So it took the local configuration and ran it. Now let's change it. We can override it using this part summit command. Uh, just like I already you saw, I'm going to use it yarn and then cluster mode. Uh, iPhone, iPhone, master yarn, and then deploy mode is cluster. So, mostly 99% of the project use uh, cluster mode. Okay, let me just uh, change the output because it's going to change it. So, 99% of the time we'll be using cluster mode because it is uh, it will run on it will start the application master in any of the node it is available which is more frequency so it will just uh, start it there if you started with the client mode what will happen is it will create the application master in where your uh, landing node is there like in the edge node itself it will create the you know, like application master that's if many people are running there it will running out of it will run off run out of memory that is why I always choose a uh, cluster mode in if you're running the spark in production and if you're debugging, if you want to see the results in the screen itself, then just go for the client mode. As you can see, just I can see I just started the job. 
it is showing just accepted accepted it is not showing me any logs inside if i want to see the log i have to go inside and check it i have to go to the resource manager and i have to check what is accepted one here the job is running so yeah it's run actually it's, uh, it will be failing actually uh, due to my local issue so it will fail i will be able to see there okay see the log if you want to see just here itself just use a client mode that's what we use in production sometimes okay the job has completed let's see if the data is created or not it is showing like it is failed but actually it is not it's just something issue is to do with my local um, system so that's fine okay it's created fine so let me change the configuration again i just asked uh, deploy mode cluster and then yarn i given and i ran it it's running and i'm going to change furthermore i'm going to give the uh, executor memory number of executor let's have num num executors uh, let's have one because i don't know much memory in the vm just 7 gb i given number of executor executor memory i believe this is the one let's see 500 mb okay 55 mb i give okay 500 mb i can give that's executor memory and then i can give driver memory also driver memory is also 500 m and then what else i can give i can give cores number of cores that is also possible how much executor uh, per executor how much core you want to see you can tell that also you can set uh, num cores i think num cores let's have one core per that and i just want to mention some name for the job i can mention it as a job hyphen hyphen name I can Tamil Bumi English English job. Okay, this is English job. Let me just run it. Okay, okay, it failed something. Something we gave is wrong. Num course is not actual parameter, but it will show you what is actual one. So we can see it here. Master we have given, deploy mode we have given, class name we have given, jars I'll tell you in some time, and uh, executor number of cores. Where is it? Kill supervised total executor executor course okay that's not number of course that's executor hyphen course okay I did something okay okay executor hyphen okay let's change it first it's gonna come here I will use it eight executor hyphen core that's what we need to give. <coughs> Executor hyphen core one. Okay, again it's showing error. Okay, executors hyphen core, I believe. Executor cores. Okay, sorry, I missed this. It happens actually. Whenever we are running first time, it will happen. So executor hyphen cores. Okay, I just given and enter. Now it will run. <clears throat> okay, it started. Let's go and see in the inside. Like what is that? It's how much memory it is taking and it will take actually twice okay started is an accepted state okay it started actually as you can see it here it took one container one core and one to, uh, like one zero two four mb of total memory it includes the driver and then the uh, like executor totally it took that much memory and if you go inside, you'll be able to see other details as well. And you can see the logs, so what it is doing. So similarly, if you change the configuration, you're going to change the entire thing, whatever is going to happen. So if you're running in cluster mode, you'll be able to see the logs only here. Okay, not there. That's what the main difference is. And it's going still going accepted state. So just you will be able to see what, what happened behind. You will not be able to, you have to go here and then only you can see what's happening. So in production environment, you will be having the URL for this yarn resource manager in your local itself. You will be able to see that and hear what are the jobs running. And we just changed the name and came here. Tamil Bumi English job. Okay. It's just we are doing a video in English. That's it. Okay. Now this also done. Let's see if output eight is there or not. Okay. Adobe FS LS slash user. Cloud Ra. And then what? Output. Eight. Yeah, it's success. So we can, you can see the data. It's also created. So these are the multiple things you can specify. Mainly, these are the things which uh, in production will be specifying. 
number of executors and deploy mode, master, yarn, and cluster, and the number of executors, number of executor memory. This will be depending, it will be changing driver memory and executor core and the name of the job. These are the things mandatorily we'll be giving. Here for this particular job, we are not using any customized jars like Avro changing or something. If we are going to use that, we need to use iPhone iPhone jars and then push that also into the uh, like cluster. Uh, let me show you. I just if you just uh, I'll show you what all the other options are available. Okay, so here uh, iPhone iPhone jars. This option we'll be using if we wanted to push some of the like. Um, uh, sometimes we may want to add custom jars like Avro uh, changing jar uh, like Avro or uh, some pack uh, some of the new jars if you want to do you have to add it using the iPhone iPhone jars and then you just mention the jar in the spark summit command itself so that that will be also taken and uploaded into the cluster and use it and similar way you can upload the files also sometimes if you want to broadcast use some mapping files you have to pass it like this okay and properties also property first you can use just iPhone iPhone property builds it will be uploaded. So all these things are like very useful. All these things we'll be using in production day to day job submission. Okay, so and this principal key tab will be used if you are using something kind of uh, what is that? Hmm, Kerberos. Okay, if you are using those things, then Kerberos will be used. This is the way you are going to access the data. This is the way you are going to access the clusters, big data jobs, and this is the way you do the pro, like in live. This is the way you will be accessing and communicating with the uh, cluster. So I hope uh, this video is useful to you. And if you're not able to understand some jargons like executor, what is executor, what is executor memory, how much we need to mention everything. If you have some more doubts on that and feel free to drop a note in the uh, description. And uh, also my number is there in the description. You can just uh, WhatsApp me and uh, I like my mail is also there. If you're in doubt, you feel free to contact me. And that's it for today. And we'll see you in the next uh, video. Thank you. Bye-bye. And make sure you subscribe to receive the next videos. Bye-bye.